my name is Nicole. Welcome to my channel, Travel to Money. In this video, I will share with you the initial steps on my first big travel adventure, hard lessons that I learned, and what I packed for the long journey. If you are new here, I have created this channel to help you learn about how to travel, adventure, and have fun on the road to financial independence. I have spent the last few years traveling the world. I bought and paid off a house in Spain, I've worked all kinds of side jobs, and have used all of this to help me move toward financial independence. I believe that the road to financial freedom can and should be fun. I hope that you'll jump on this journey with me, no matter where you're starting from. In the last video, I shared about my first home purchase, renting one of the bedrooms on Airbnb, and how I started dreaming about making full-time travel a reality. In February of 2017, I was preparing to take off for my first big adventure in Europe and the Middle East. I was planning to travel for seven months and going to rent out my home as a short-term vacation rental. Since I knew several months in advance that I would be listing my home as a vacation rental, I had it listed as soon as possible. I chose to list on two platforms, Airbnb and HomeAway. I had done really well listing the single bedroom on Airbnb, and Airbnb was a much more common name to me, so I was surprised when most of my bookings ended up being with HomeAway. I actually prefer the Airbnb platform when it comes to ease of use, but ultimately, you go where the money is. I didn't want to have instant booking available on both sites because I didn't want to end up double booked, so I chose HomeAway for instant booking after realizing that most of my bookings were coming from there. Between the two, I was able to maintain about a 90% booking rate. When you're trying to determine what your income could be for a short-term rental per year, don't multiply your nightly rate by 365 days. That's just not realistic. If you run a good rental, you should plan on having about an 80% booking rate, which is multiplying your nightly rate by 292 days. So if you are renting out a house for $100 per night, you could realistically expect to bring in around $29,000 per year. How much you actually count as income will depend on if you have a mortgage, how much the bills are, property management, taxes, and more. I'll break all of that down in another video soon. Moving on to packing. I am not always the type of person to pack in advance of a trip, but this time I really focused on packing with a purpose as I had determined to take only a backpack and a small shoulder bag. I didn't want to have to check a bag so that I would save on time and money and also reduce the risk of losing my things. I ended up choosing the PackSafe VentureSafe 45 liter G2, which I purchased for $200. It opens like a suitcase, but it has exterior pockets that are easy to access while on the go. This bag is intentionally made for safety. It has steel webbing and is RFID safe, so it helps protect IDs and credit cards from hacker scanning. The zippers lock together, and then they lock down to a bar, so you never have to worry about someone being able to open it from the back. The bag is super high quality. After having it for several years now, it still looks as new as the day I bought it. They've probably come out with some newer versions since then. PackSafe is a company focused on making gear that helps customers enjoy life's adventures while knowing that your belongings are safe. If you are someone who worries a lot when traveling, you might want to check out their gear for peace of mind. They are also committed to sustainability. And in 2021, 74% of their products use recycled fabrics. Kudos to them for that. My second bag was also a pack safe. I purchased the CitySafe 200 G2, which had many of the features I mentioned from the backpack, and I could use it as a purse of sorts when I need it. As I continued to select items for this journey, I focused a lot on items or clothing that could have multiple uses. I only packed dark color clothing so that I would only have to do one load of laundry per week. The more you simplify, the better. To simplify isn't easy though. It takes time and intentionality. As I chose my clothing, I only packed shirts that could be worn with every pair of pants and vice versa. I took one pair of lightweight running shoes, a pair of sandals, 
and a pair of Toms. My heaviest items I always wore on my flights. So to travel, I'd always wear a pair of jeans, my heaviest, bulkiest sweater, my coat, a scarf, and my boots, which saves a lot of room in your bag. My coat was one of the best picked items. I think I bought it at Burlington Coat Factory for about 20 or $30. It was a light gray, super lightweight. The material was water repellent. It had a fleece lining, went down to my knees, and it had zipper pockets. I loved having pockets that zipped because I always felt like my keys and my phone were safe. Anytime I went anywhere, I would only leave the house with my phone, ID, one credit card, a little bit of local currency, and my keys. For electronics, in addition to my computer, phone, and camera, I had some other things to think about. First, I purchased a universal travel adapter and converter. You may think that you only need the adapter for the right kind of plug, but not all places you visit will run electricity with the same amount of voltage. So I thought that in order to protect my computer, I would buy an adapter that also worked as a converter. This was one of my better purchases. Second, I bought a global mobile Wi-Fi hotspot. Say that five times fast. This is something I haven't used very often. The service itself is pretty expensive, and since then, I've learned that I could purchase a SIM card at different phone stores and then use those cards with the hotspot instead of paying for the service. I almost always had good working Wi-Fi, so depending on where you were going, this may or may not be necessary. Third, I purchased an Anchor PowerCore portable charger. I don't know why I assumed that I would need a portable charger all the time, but this is another thing that I hardly ever used. It was definitely handy on a few occasions, but in reality, phones these days will last an entire day. However, if you need a portable charger, this one is excellent. I took a Canon T3i camera with me, but I hardly ever used it either. With the camera capabilities on phones, unless you are a professional photographer or videographer, it just isn't necessary in my opinion. The last week was hectic. I hardly slept. I was working my job during the day and still moving furniture to and from the house in the evenings and getting all the little details ready. I had hired a cleaning company, a property manager, a pool service, and a lawn service, plus I had a friend as a backup. I also had two credit cards put on my account in the names of close friends of mine in case there was a housing emergency. I think I did a pretty good job thinking of everything I possibly could, but that week was stressful. In hindsight, I probably should have taken a few days of vacation from work. I don't know if anyone else is like me, but I try to fit way too much into too little time. One of the ways I had prepared to travel was getting a dental visit in early. Unfortunately, I found out that I had to have quite a bit of work done and there was only one appointment to do it. So I ended up in a dental chair for about six hours on the Tuesday before I left. Worst ever. Do yourself a favor and don't save those appointments for the week before you leave. After being extremely exhausted that week, the Thursday before leaving, I started to get that itch in the back of my throat. I couldn't believe it. I was getting sick. I woke up on Friday with some sort of flu. My friends were having a going away party for me that night, and the next day I was taking off for DC, where I had to stay a night before flying to Paris. This was a nightmare, but I suppose it makes for a better and more realistic story. When I had been dreaming about travel, I certainly had not imagined that I'd be leaving with the flu. I didn't really have an option though. My friends took me to the airport, and I'd just like to say that I am really awful at saying goodbye. As an Enneagram 7, I want to leave and I just as desperately want to hold on. I had to say goodbye to my friend's son, who was only 8 at the time, and after trying to hold back the tears, I literally cried my way to the plane. As I was boarding, I was lifting up my bag to the overhead bin when it slipped and landed on a man's head and then down into a woman's lap. The man was so gracious, the woman, not so much. I then sat in my middle seat and after having cried for the last 30 minutes, I couldn't stop coughing. You know, I had the flu. Everyone hated me. This was not what I had imagined. Yet we press on. 
The overnight in DC was uneventful. One of the lessons I've learned is that sometimes it is better to pay a little bit more for a flight that has better times, fewer connections, and things like that. I have learned the value of my time and that sometimes it is better to spend $50 more to shorten your travel time by nine hours. The next day, I flew to Paris and then took an Uber from the airport to my little Airbnb studio apartment. So I'm at the apartment in Paris. I still wasn't feeling well, but I found some groceries and got some rest for a couple of days. I remember calling my dad after my first full day there and telling him that I was dreaming about buying a tiny home when I got back to the US. He just laughed at me and said, you're just getting started on your travel adventure. You haven't even been there for 24 hours. Just enjoy it and stop thinking about the next thing. It is true that I often struggle to be in the present because the future just seems like another adventure waiting to happen. One of the first guests to rent my house left me a kind review and sent me some private comments about small things that could improve the stay. Some of their suggestions were small outlet lights that would help them see when walking in the dark and foldable trays they could use if they wanted to eat or have drinks in the living room. If you are in the vacation rental space, then you are in the business of customer service. Anytime a guest wanted something at my house, I almost always invested in it. I don't see spending money to make my guest experience better as a waste or a loss. It is an investment in your guest experience. It is an investment in good reviews. And good reviews equal more bookings, and more bookings equal more money. I went right away onto my Amazon account and ordered most of the items that my guests had suggested. I was having them shipped to the property manager that I had hired. What I didn't expect was that Amazon would flag my account as fraud because I was ordering from Paris. Did they send me a notification? Nope. Was there anything I could do? Nope. I spent hours trying to get it resolved. I really hope Amazon has improved their process since then. What happened was that they deleted my entire account my entire account with no recourse. I didn't even know that was possible. What a headache. This is where a VPN comes in handy. If you're not familiar, VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. Basically, it keeps what you do on the internet secure. This is especially handy if you are using Wi-Fi in public places like Starbucks. But another benefit is that you can make it look like you are online in, in another country. So I can be in France, but select a connection in Florida, and it makes it look like Florida is where I'm connecting from. Anyway, lesson learned. I thought that by letting my banks and credit card companies know that I would be traveling, that would be enough. Who knew companies like Amazon would have such black and white procedures for what might look like fraud? Even though it felt like a waste of time, it was still worth figuring out how to order in order to enhance my guest's experience. A few days later, I had finally recovered from most of my flu symptoms and began exploring Paris every day before work. I probably walked about five miles a day and never even thought about it. I was enjoying the coffee and the food and getting around in basic French that I had been working on for several months with the app Duolingo. Once the weekend came, I was feeling much better and decided to attend a couch surfing event in Paris where they were attending an open mic night. Now, I've never used the couch surfing app to actually stay anywhere, but I have definitely used it for attending events and meetups with awesome strangers who I like to refer to as new friends. There were about 15 people in our group and most of them were actually locals. Their kindness was genuine and when they learned that my only fluent language was English, they all spoke in English, even when they weren't speaking to me, just so that I would be comfortable. This was extraordinary to me. I got on really well with a nice guy who I spoke with for a lot of the evening. We both got up to leave around midnight, and he offered to walk with me for a while. After walking for a little bit, he suggested we rent a couple of bicycles from the machines, this is one of the most memorable experiences of my travels. 
we rode bikes around a quiet Paris until two in the morning in 35 degree weather. It was incredible. I know so many are scared to step out and meet strangers, and I understand there are certain risks. I have learned to go with my gut, and because of this, I never wonder if I'm missing out. Instead, I'm making memories that will last a lifetime. My new friend helped me order an Uber that would take me home, as he didn't want me walking home alone at this time of night. When I got back to my apartment, I looked in the mirror, and one of my eyes was blood red. I felt a little embarrassed not knowing if it had looked like this all evening. This began a long journey for me and one that I will tell you about in the next video. I'll share with you about healthcare costs in France, what it was like to temporarily lose sight in one eye while traveling, the next leg of my journey to Italy, and I'll also break down how I had things set up for my property manager back in the States. If you have enjoyed this video, I will do a little happy dance when I get a notification on my phone that you have subscribed. Tap the like button too and join me on this ride where travel and adventure build financial freedom. Thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to see where your dreams will take you.